let's try and make some more video uh, gliders. Let's read about some of these gliders. I have to uh, prepare the video a little bit so I'm not spending most of my time to drink cola. Or... But let's try and read uh, this Wikipedia, read it on Wikipedia and then talk about it after the video. But that's many gliders. You know, just like to get started. Just like to get started. So first I'll try to keep the video below <coughs> 20 minutes. So first I will read this, then we can look on the web page and talk about it. Because like uh, I did not have time to read all this many because I'm always tired. I always tired and need sleep. So I like to read this. I like to read it before I close <coughs> everything down. I have 70. I have 70 web pages. And English is not my language, so that's helped me a lot to have this computer voice. And I read uh, my same same time the computer voice. I read uh, myself. Roladen Schneider LS1 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 Thrill Club Class Formulae Standard Class Sailplane National Origin Gemini Manufacturer Roladen Schneider First Flight 1968 Number Build 464 The Roladen Schneider LS1 is a standard class single seat glider manufactured in Germany by Roladen Schneider from 1968 to 1977. Development the LS-1 standard class design was the first aircraft tip arising from the partnership between Wolf Lemke and Walter Schneider, who had already worked together as students on the ground-breaking Acre Flyer Darmstadt D-36. Here, and in subsequent Lemke Schneider, LS, designs, Wolf Lemke concentrated on aerodynamics while Walter Schneider contributed mostly to the structural and production issues. The LS1 made its debut at the 1968 German National Championships, taking first and second place with their designers themselves at the controls. The success of its design increased in the subsequent years until, in 1975, it was the most flown glider in the German nationals. The LS-1C took first place in the 1970 World Championships at Marfa, Texas. Jan Rothhart also won the World Gliding Competition Championships 2015 in the club class. Furthermore, Christoph Nach became junior world gliding champion in the club class in 2005. The manufacture of the LS1 was discontinued after the IGC introduced the new unrestricted 15 meter class in the spring 1977, as the manufacturer needed all its resources to increase production of the LS3. A total of 464 LS1 were built. It was succeeded by the LS2 and LS4 dot design. Aerodynamics. The designers desired to demonstrate that high performance and pleasant fly characteristics could coexist in a standard class sailplane built with the then still unexplored group technology. The performance improvements came from the wing having a high aspect ratio, the doubly tapered wing and the new FX66S196 laminar flow airfoil profile developed by Professor Franz Wertmann. This profile supports laminar flow over a wide range of lift coefficient. The natural qualities of the airfoil profile combined with careful wing design yielded gentle low speed behavior. Variants up to the LS1D had an all-flying tail with oversensitive handling characteristics at high speeds. A conventional stabilizer and elevator were adopted for later variants. Alt how fractionally less efficient, this is much safer and more pleasant to fly. The front of the original two-piece canopy was blended with the fuselage for improved aerodynamics. Construction 
The materials used were glass fiber, contisel foam, polystyrene, plywood for the spa web sand hardwood in reinforcements. Wood was phased out in the LS1F version. The FX66S196 profile, with a thickness to cord ratio of almost 20%, made it possible to build a light and economical spa. This was important because in the late 60s glass fiber was the only affordable reinforcement material, carbon was still too expensive. The GRP fuselage shell was produced in female molds, in an innovative method developed by Wolf Lemk. The LS1V1 prototype was the pattern or plug for the serial production molds. The undercarriage was initially fixed as required by the standard class rules of the time. Fuel was sprung and had its own wheel housing, separate from the internal fuselage space. The wheel brake was coupled to the air brake system. The new one-piece canopy of the LS1F required an innovative hinge with complex kinetics to deliver the forward opening movement. Variants LS1-0V1 prototype had an internal load-bearing tubular steel scaffold, as in present-day scamp hearth sailplanes. This structure was substituted by full GRP construction in production versions. LS1-0, angle of incidence was increased and improvements to the control system. 23 built off LS1-0, LS1A, and LS1B together. LS1A, trailing edge air brakes of the prototype were dropped in favor of conventional scamp hearth air brakes change incorporated on all further variants 23 built of ls1-0 ls1a and ls1b together ls1b 23 built of ls1-0 ls1a and ls1b together LS1C, 198 built of LS1C and LS1D together. LS1D, was the first to have water ballast, following a class rule change. 198 built of LS1 and LS1D together. LS1E, version was built privately by a Roladen Schneider employee under the direction of Rolf Lemke differs from the LS1C only in the use of an LS2 type tailplane, 2 built. LS1F, tailplane of the LS1F and the same fuselage as former versions, 1 built. LS1F, introduced the one-piece canopy, conventional tailplane, redesigned rudder and structural changes that allowed more water ballast and higher flight mass. It also has reduced wing incidence relative to the fuselage, resulting in noticeably better high-speed performance than the earlier LS1 variants. 240 built. LS1F, 45, water ballasts of 2x90 liters instead of 2x45 liters, increasing the maximal wing loading from 40 to 45 kg forward slash M2, hence the name, 1. 2 built. Specifications, LS1F. Data from, 2, General Characteristics Crew, 1. Length, 6.75 M, 22 feet 2 in. Wingspan, 15 M, 49 feet 3 in. Height, 1.37 M, 4 feet 6 in. Wing area, 9.75 square meters. 104.9 square feet. Aspect ratio, 23.1. Airfoil, modified Wertman FX66S196 sections. Empty weight, 230 kilograms, 507 pound. Max takeoff weight, 390 kilograms, 860 pound. Water ballast, 90L, 24 US gal, 20 imp gal. Performance stall speed, 70 km per hour, 43 miles per hour, 38 kn. Never exceed speed, 250 km per hour, 160 miles per hour, 
130 kn in smooth and rough air. 170 km per hour, 92 kn, 110 miles per hour, maneuvering speed 170 km forward slash h, 92 kn, 110 miles per hour, on aero to 130 km forward slash h, 70 kn, 81 miles per hour, on winch launch limits. Plus 5.3 minus 2.65 at 170 km per hour, 92 kn, 110 miles per hour. Plus 4 minus 1.5 at 250 km per hour, 130 kn, 160 miles per hour. Maximum glide ratio, 38.5 at 100 km per hour, 54 kn. 62 miles per hour rate of sink 0.60 m forward slash s 118 foot forward slash min at 72 kilometers per hour 39 kn 45 miles per hour wing loading 45 kilogram forward slash m2 9.2 pound forward slash square feet igc club class handicap 100 See also Aircraft of comparable role, configuration, and irable Kaufbus Glass Flugel Standard Libel Skemp Hearth Standard Cirrus Schlecher ASW-15 Related lists list of gliders Good, so uh, now I did read it, so let's try But first, I had to lead it because I have so many open. I have the maximum number is open. I have it open on the uh, web page. So this is uh, the Rolladen slider in this one. <coughs> That's not for me because it's one of the first generation fiberglass. That's from the late 60s. But actually, I think it should uh, open, but it closed the ASW-15. We need uh, to uh, have it open and let's stand up the bailing and this one I have, I did not have it open because <coughs> I did not like uh, the look, I don't like the look of the stand up the bell. Because it looks like, uh, I don't like the cockpit, I like, uh, better like, uh, <coughs> I like uh, something like this, if I should buy an old glider from the early, around early 60s, around 907 should be something like, look like this, but this video is about the LS1. Uh, is W, but maybe it should read the LS2. Uh, I have the LS3, uh, <coughs> I don't have the LS2 open. But maybe we should uh, read the LS2. Uh, Why not? We don't need to read everything, but I got 70. I have 70 uh, windows over. I need to see do this alone because it takes it takes a lot of time, and we have to keep every video less less 20 minutes, I think. No, it's uh, I have to see do it alone when I'm not recording to open all this. So that's LS because we need the, uh, I will not close it down, but here we got the LS2. I need uh, some time to move it around. But it have a glide ratio uh, 38. That's a normal, that's not uh, low and that's not high, but that's what they had around the 1970s. Uh, the ASW. Have like 40, 
No, this have even lower. This have only uh, 36, 36 glide ration. But the glide ration, that's not uh, everything. That's uh, you have to fly it. What they fly different. Every glider fly uh, their own way. You have to fly it if you like it. How it handles in different kind of speeds and how you fly. So, but this is the ASW but I need uh, some time to move it around because I got 70 feet or 70 windows open. And we only got a few minutes left. So it can only know it the, the load is very low because I had some plane I would like to fly if I get a glider I would like to fly a long distance with engine. <coughs> This engine moves about uh, 8 liters, 8 liters every hour. So if you can get a glider, could have like 240 liters, 200, 200 liters of fuel, or 240. That's 30, 30 hours you can run an engine. No, so this even uh, only have 390 kilos. That's far away from this 512, 525 kilos. I need. My uh, calculator. <coughs> but uh, I like to keep uh, the video below 25 minutes. Maybe we can show a need. I need to prepare my video. Now this can load the very low number of kilos. Maximum load is 390 and 230. This aircraft can only load uh, 160 kilos. That's super low. That's super low. This is why I don't like it. It can load a super low number of kilos. And the glide ration is not so good. So that's mainly why I should uh, buy aircraft like this. So um, that's not the aircraft for me because uh, the numbers is not good. So I need one could load like more than 300 kilos, like the ASV, uh, ASV uh, 20. Yes, but I have so I have so many uh, windows open. I need uh, I need time. No, this one can load a lot more kilos. This can uh, load uh, like, like maximum weight is 525 minus 260. This one can load 265 kilos. The ASW 20, and that's a, a club class two. And the glide ration is uh, much higher, 42. So if I should buy old, this is from the 70s. This is soon like 15 years so if I should buy an old glider, I will, uh, that's uh, something like this. But I don't have a pilot license, so I'm just looking at the gliders. So uh, like this one, there's nothing wrong with this, but I think you should not be on year 2024. You should not buy this today. If you're looking for old gliders from the 70s, you should not buy this one because the numbers is not good. But now you have to try every glider fly different, and that's something. Uh, how the cost, uh, how you can get. I think you can get maybe some something like this, like twenty twenty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars. Between 10 and 10 and 20,000 euros, 15,000 euros and 20,000 euros. No, 15,000 euros and 25,000. I don't know how much gliders cost a lot of money, but we have to keep the video below 20 minutes, so I will uh, stop the video.